So a couple weeks ago, I described a rolling wheel without slipping. Shot a little video about it. You can go back and watch it. And it's really important to understand this concept when you're looking at deceleration, acceleration, change of direction, and injury prevention in sport. Now, that's not the point of this video. The video is I wanted to tell you that yesterday I truly experienced this personally. So myself and my wife were walking down the street and most likely you've done this at some point in your life. When you're walking and maybe one of the sidewalk tiles is uneven, right? And it's up a little bit higher. And all of a sudden you kind of kick it with your foot. Let's call it stubbing your toe, if you will. But all of a sudden you have an abrupt stop to your forward movement. And then all of a sudden your entire body gets thrusted forward. Like all of a sudden your upper body accelerates at a much faster rate than your lower body. Just wanted to let you know, I personally experienced that. So what happened was my skull shot forward, my suboccipital muscles basically went into a spasm. It was pretty remarkable because when you're normally walking, you don't realize that the upper portion of your body based off of this concept is actually moving at a faster rate when suddenly stopped than your lower body. Right, and if you look at that rolling wheel without slipping concept, right, so you have your forward translation. So if I was a circle, let's call it a wheel, traveling across the sidewalk, and then all of a sudden I hit that blunt force or that blunt object, and all of a sudden I now accentuate the rotational forces associated with movement forward. So really important, real life scenario. But when you're thinking about change of direction in sport, this is where isometrics become really important. We just think because you're zeroing out velocity, there's no muscular contraction occurring internally in our structure, which is blatantly false, right? You have to have a high upregulation of isometric muscle tension in order to negatively accelerate, right? So that they call eccentrics the breaking of an isometric contraction. Right? So, you know, you look at it that way. Yeah, you have Titan filaments and stuff like that acting as an anchor to sort of slow down. But at the end, all you're doing is you're kind of slowing down to zero velocity, not zero muscle tension. And then what we have to do in order to reaccelerate is go from that isometric perspective to concentric. That's all it is. We've really kind of screwed up that. Uh, relationship as we're talking traditionally about the stretch shortening cycle because what we forgot about was isometric breaking isometric breaking isometric breaking isometric breaking so that dampening effect right Titans involved yes don't don't think I'm discounting that however what occurs is you're basically creating that isometric tension and then eventually based off your brain usually saying, okay, now's the time to stop and change direction. These are happening at a subconscious level that you may not be thinking about. So hugely important concept to understand. When we go in to change direction, we zero out our velocity, not our muscle tension. That muscle tension is highly governed by your ability to rapidly produce force, so we call it rate of force development, and your peak isometric force output. Now, it gets interesting because we then look at it and go, yeah, but you're moving. It's like, yeah, we got that. But that is like, you know, void of the nervous side, the chemical alterations within our structure that make this event occur. Movement, be it that concentric contraction, is like third or fourth thing down the line. So let's focus on the beginning, right? So remember that rolling wheel without slipping, right? Very important. Key concepts with that, right? So if we want to just quickly review that, rolling wheel without slipping. So we talked about that. But if you have a spinning wheel, right? So that's when basically that wheel is actually going to rotate more than it translates forward. Not really bad, not really good per se. Depends on what your outcome. Now, skidding, right? So the third concept, this is where it gets really important. It's when you lack the rotation 
and you have more forward translation. Now, if you're thinking about your femur and tibia, well, if I have more translation and less rotation, maybe that's the arc, basically the architecture, probably the wrong word. Um, that's the catalyst to that ACL tear that you're looking to prevent.